So, Mo, let's talk about Facebook and what it is that uh, investors may be embracing here and perhaps what investors may be overlooking. Facebook reported some first quarter numbers. You're hearing some things about the second quarter. Is this company really going to be able to deliver on the expectations that are built into a target price, 35 to 38 bucks? Well, that is certainly the question. Um, you know, what, what Facebook has done, uh, which, which nobody can take away from it, is build the largest network of users in the world that we've ever seen. I mean, they've, they've, they're, they're on a path to amass, you know, pretty much all of the developed world on the platform. And the, if you look at just the daily active user engagement numbers, they're pretty remarkable. Um, <clears throat> but can any of that be attributed to the fact that they offer it all for free and don't ask anything of the users, which is why they don't bring any dollars? I think um, all of that can be attributed to the fact that they offer it for free, but that, but... Uh, there are plenty of other services that are offered for free that haven't even touched or scratched the surface of the amount of usage that Facebook has garnered. So I, I think we have to give them a tremendous amount of credit for the product that they've built, the team that they've assembled and their execution to date. But where I think you know, the, the risk is in the platform, um, and certainly the market is not pricing this in today, is twofold. Um, you know, it, it, we, we saw the announcement with GM yesterday pulling back on advertising on the Facebook platform. The Q1 numbers came in soft. Uh, Facebook you know, claimed seasonality, although this early in a company's revenue growth cycle, you would expect to see continued forward momentum. Uh, and not know. only that, look, the data set just isn't there, let's, let's be honest, to, to, to judge what seasonality is. Right, it, it's still a bit early, uh, of course, just given the, the limited operating history, and then uh, certainly from a revenue point of view. And then, you know, I'm hearing that the second quarter numbers are not blowing anybody away. Uh, I, I don't have the actual data on that, but I've Could heard that some be rumblings. why they're racing to make such a tremendously <clears throat> large deal? deal here? Um, possibly. You know, I think the time has come. And once I mean, you did they know something that investors don't? I, hey, I don't think we so. We can't translate this into something. Let's jam as much through as we can. No, because like the mark, you know, they're not, they're only, they're raising $12 billion, let's say. Just 12 Half billion. of it. Yeah, but you know, like how much of that, half of that's primary, half of that's secondary, let's say. You know, nobody's getting rich on this. They, there's lockups for, you know, six months or however long for people to get out of the deal. This is, you know, once the, once the wheels go in motion to take company public, they're, they're taking the company public. And this is not about jamming the market with anything. They have made a, a concerted, you know, decision that they're going to do this and they're going to do it. Um, you know, I think the issue with Facebook is they have, they have not figured out, um, you know, what their, their advertising model. Look, when you look at Google, for instance, it's a, it's a good analogy. They had a very clear, you know, paid search AdWords model when they, when they hit the market. And that, that large has driven the bulk of their revenue uh, to this day. Uh, Facebook is still experimenting on the revenue side, so there's a tremendous amount of risk there uh, in terms of you know, whether they're going to be able to find their stride. And I think the second thing on Facebook, which is uh, perhaps even more important than the first, is mobile, right? We live in a world where increasingly I think more people are going to be spending time on their mobile phone and their tablets. I think you know, these sales of these devices are going to go down precipitously over the next couple of years. Um, and two things These on mobile. These devices meaning laptops. Yes, uh, and personal computers. Well, tell us a bit more about how Mark Zuckerberg, what he needs to do to take the people who are increasingly using Facebook on their cell phones and get them, somehow turn that into a reliable revenue stream. Well, you know, I think it starts with having great mobile products. And, you know, I, I was here a few weeks ago talking about the Instagram acquisition. And, and you uh, liked it. Yeah, I, I think it's terrific because it's I mean, it's an Justin Bieber agrees. My wife and Justin Bieber like the Instagram. We generally position. tend to agree on things, Justin and I. But um, the, the reason I like it is, you know, I said at the time it, it was not just a defensive acquisition, but I thought it was a very offensive acquisition and a realization on the part of Facebook that their mobile product just was not up to par. I think they tried to, you know, jam a web experience into a mobile device, and you really need to build mobile-first experiences when you're thinking about the mobile platform. Um, so that's kind of one mega issue, which is they need to get their mobile products right. I think Instagram's a step in the right direction, but they will need to do a lot more. Secondly is monetization on mobile. Um, you know, if, if display advertising style ads don't 
work on the web, then they certainly don't work on mobile. Right. And um, you know, Facebook is if they're having challenges, uh, you know, really pushing the monetization equation on their web property or really scaling it at the at the growth rate that they'd like to continue to see. You know, I think mobile presents an even bigger challenge for them, and that's one that not I, just I, for them though, right? How do you get people to press the button or to do something when they're on their cell phone that translates into money? Yeah, look, it's it's that's certainly a question for many. Um, you know. Apple has made a mint of the mobile business through their app store and we've seen other uh, games companies and certain subscription products or uh, paid products that have made some money. What we haven't seen yet is the true scalable advertising revenue that that needs to be put against those you know the eyeballs that have to be monetized which is really what everybody's betting on with Facebook at the end of the day and what's pushing the valuation so high is is the sheer number of people that they reach and and the the conclusion which is hey if all the folks are there advertisers are gonna have to try and reach them through that platform but I think in terms of how that's gonna happen specifically uh, we're still very very early in that process and I think frankly that's the risk that's the risk in the stock and that's the risk in the company right now. What's your concern level that people are participating in the deal merely because it's on everybody's mind, it's touted as the hottest deal out there, and we could see two, three weeks out, you know, enormous amounts get sold back into the market? Um, I, I don't think that'll yeah, be so the case for, right well now. for a couple reasons first of all I think the institutions that are going to be driving the bulk of the demand here or are driving the bulk of the demand here twofold you know when the when Facebook goes into the index a lot of people are going to have to own that stock so you're going to see a lot of uh, folks just from an index point of view uh, buying the stock I think whether, second, whether they participate in the IPO or not that's one and two is in terms of people participating in the IPO with this much demand I think you're seeing a lot of institutions um, really take a long-term view and a long-term position on the company so I'd, I'd be shocked to see them but do you think the I have to interrupt Mo because we don't have much time left do you really think that the incremental demand that we're seeing these past few days is coming from the institutions or so is that it was, maybe from that the was my user base the 901 million people who are on Facebook so that's kind of my that was my last point which is where I think you will see pressure on the stock is the retail base but also uh, the funds on the margin the hedge fund community and beyond who are also playing and this is a big thing to note you know uh, the 180 days post the deal Facebook's gonna have an immense tax liability around the RSUs that are coming that are vesting and they're gonna need to deal with that and that may require depending on where the stock is at that time them raising capital and so you know I think what you'll see is in institutions taking a long view on the stock and then on the margin whether that's 20 40 percent I don't quite know yet that's where the stock's going to move and it's going to be the hedge fund community and potentially the retail market because this is the hottest retail stock in the world.